Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's my favorite time of the week. Oh, Dad, welcome everyone in already. All right, guys, you know what time it is. It's time for Going Crazy at All with Pastor John. So, you know we like to start off with an awesome game. We've been playing this game the past few weeks. It's called Five Second Rule. This is the game where a category is going to go up, and you're going to get five seconds to name as many things about that category as you can. Let's check it out right now. Ready, set, go! So, you did a nice job with that. You did a lot of things. I expected a few more things for superheroes, because, I mean, superheroes are awesome, but you did pretty good. All right, so, now, remember, we've been learning how to go pro when it comes to being with Jesus. So, we got to help somebody else go pro, because they're calling in, and they need some help. So, let's check it out and see if we can help them out. Hey, Zylo and Nova, Zip coming at you. It's great to be talking with you guys today. I'm reaching out because I'm having some trouble with my older cousin. We used to be really close, but now she's always so mean to me. Yesterday, I won an award for perfect attendance. I was really excited and wanted to show my trophy to everyone in my family. But when I went to get it, it was missing. A couple of hours later, I found it broken on the floor in my room. When I asked my cousin about it, she told me that I didn't deserve that award, so she was glad it was broken. She is so mean to me, and I don't know if we'll ever be close again. Do you guys have any advice? Wow, I mean, first of all, has anyone ever heard of a guy named Zip before? Anyone ever heard of that name before? That's pretty crazy. As if his name wasn't tough enough to deal with, he was in a pretty tough situation where he used to be close with his cousin and now his cousin was just being mean to him for no reason and not even caring about his trophy being destroyed. I mean, I know I'd be pretty hurt over that. What do you guys think? Have you ever had someone in your life that should be nice to you and yet is really mean, maybe a bully or... Maybe you're in that kind of the same boat as Zip where somebody who was nice to you isn't nice to you anymore. The reality is, is we've all been in that, that situation before and we all need to learn how to deal with it because it's not easy and it can really hurt and make us feel pretty broken. But that's why we need to learn to go pro because when we learn our formula go and pro, we can have hope in any situation we face. And the best way to start off going pro is by looking at the Bible and seeing how that can help us. So let's check out something right now. Accessing the story of Joseph. Story successfully loaded. Joseph's dad loved him more than all his other sons. He even made Joseph his very own special robe, which made Joseph's brothers very jealous. Joseph made things worse by bragging about dreams he had of ruling over them, and he tattled on them to their dad all the time. So Joseph's brothers made a plan to kill him. They threw him into a deep, empty well and sold him to some travelers from another country. Joseph may have felt angry with his brothers, and I'm sure he was scared to be taken away to a foreign land. But Joseph had hope because God was with him, and God gave Joseph a lot of success. He was even put in charge of his master, Potiphar's house. Potiphar was a lead official for the king, which meant he was very powerful. One day, Potiphar's wife accused Joseph of doing something terrible, even though he had done nothing wrong. Because of that, Joseph was thrown into prison. There was a man in prison who had been one of the king's helpers. This man had a dream, and God gave Joseph the ability to understand what it meant. Joseph explained that the man was going to get out of prison and be able to work for the king again, and he asked the man to remember him and help him get out of jail too. But when the man got out, he forgot all about Joseph, leaving him stuck in prison, feeling hopeless. Flash forward. After two years, Joseph had the chance to help the king understand a dream. And when he did, the king let Joseph out of jail. God knew this was the perfect time for Joseph to get out. The king's dreams showed that there were going to be seven years where a lot of food would grow, and then seven more years when no food would grow and people would be hungry. The king was going to need someone to be in charge of storing up that food, and he gave the job to Joseph. 
The first seven years that Joseph was in charge, his life was good and full of joy. And in those good times, Joseph remembered how God had taken care of him through all his troubles. But after seven years, food stopped growing, and people from all over came to Joseph to get food. Joseph's brothers were among those who showed up to get food for their family. Joseph knew who they were, but they didn't recognize him. The second time they came to get food, Joseph couldn't keep it a secret anymore. He told the brothers who he was, and they were shocked. Joseph was feeling so many things when he saw his brothers again, but no matter how he was feeling, he had hope that God would still do good things. And God did. Joseph invited his brothers and their families to come live in the land where they would have plenty of food. Joseph was also able to hug his father for the first time in over 20 years. God knew that Joseph wanted to see his dad again, and God made it happen. Joseph remembered all that God had done for him and said to his brothers, You meant to hurt me, but God turned your evil into good. That's who God is, and that's what God does. We can have hope, because no matter what is happening in our lives, and no matter what we're feeling, we can be sure that God will do good things. The good things may not happen right away, but we can have hope no matter what, just like Joseph. Wow, whenever I look at the story of Joseph, I'm always like, how can I possibly complain about anything I go through when that guy went through all of that? I mean, he had his own brothers betraying him, he ended up as a slave, he ended up in jail, all these different things, and yet Joseph never lost hope. But I'm sure there were times where he probably felt like Zip, where he probably felt very discouraged and like just wondering, what am I going to do? But Joseph never lost hope. He stayed true to the pro formula. Now, I'm going to hand it over to my friends and they're going to tell show us how Joseph listened to our pro formula. If you guys don't remember, we'll remind you right now. Let's check it out. As you can see, the formula that Joseph followed was this, pray, remember, obey. Joseph prayed by listening to God and talking to God about what was going on and how he felt. Absolutely. There were times in Joseph's life when he wasn't sure how everything was going to turn out. So he had to remember all the good that God had already done for him. I love how even in jail, God was with Joseph and helping him. And last but definitely not least, Joseph obeyed by doing the right thing, like showing kindness to his brothers and giving them food, even when it was hard. It would have been real easy to want to get those guys back for what they did. Doing these three things will make anyone a pro at holding on to hope. So we no need to be like Joseph, because no matter what, if we pray, remember, and obey, we'll always have hope no matter what. And that's our need to know, is with God, we have hope no matter what. With God, we have hope no matter what. With God, we have hope no matter what. When we believe in Jesus, when we follow and we pray to Him, no matter what we go through, we always have the hope that Jesus will get us through, that He'll never let us down, just like with Joseph. He could have, let, he could have lost hope. He could have not prayed to God. He could have maybe said to God, you know what, if you let all this happen to me, how could you possibly care about me? How could you possibly do the right thing for me? It's just things have gotten too bad. He could have done all of that, but no. He stayed true to God. He loved Him. He remembered what God taught him, and he obeyed him, even in situations that were tough. And God was able to provide hope to him no matter what he went through. And that's the same for us. So, I don't know about you guys, but that makes me pretty excited about the God I serve. So, let's worship God right now. I can be patient. In times of trouble, I will wait. My hope is in you, God. I can obey. Remember what you say. I will pray. My hope is in you. A future I can see. I flash forward and believe. I am sure you will come through. You make things good, you always do. A future I can see. I flash forward and believe. I'm sure you will come through You make things good, you always do I'm happy I'm happy Because of the hope The hope, the hope that I have I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy Because of the hope The hope, the hope that I have I'm happy, happy, happy Because of the hope, the hope 
can be patient in times of trouble. I will wait, my hope is in you, God. I can obey, remember what you say. I will pray, my hope is in you. A future I can see, I flash forward and believe. I am sure you will come through, you make things good, you always do. A future I can see, I flash forward and believe. I am sure you will come through. Nice worshiping. I'll see you guys on Sunday for our Axis Kids Sunday service. See you later.